Well, sit down, everybody, and relax. <laughs> oh, you don't have any chairs. Okay. Got it. <laughs> well, um, first of all, let me just say that it is an honor to be here today with all of you this morning to launch this service project, number one, and number two, to commemorate Veterans Day 2010. Uh, this is a day that I hold very dear, not only as an American, but also as an immigrant. Because when I grew up in Austria, we grew up after the Second World War in fear. In fear of not having enough food, in fear of the Soviets rolling in with their tanks and crushing Austria, just like they did with Czechoslovakia and with Hungary. And the fear also to be caught in a crossfire, in a nuclear crossfire between the East and the West. But also remember clearly that there was one place without that fear. A place where freedom's light would burn eternal. And that place was America, the greatest country in the world. Now I tell you that I dreamt my whole childhood about coming to America and being part of the greatest country in the world. Little did I know then that when I come over here, I'm going to go and meet this beautiful woman here, Maria Shriver, the first lady of California, the greatest mother in the world, and the greatest wife in the world. I had no idea then, but I came over here and I was received with open arms from this country. And like millions of other immigrants, this country gave me the opportunities and to experience, to experience freedom and to give me the opportunities to have a great bodybuilding career and a great acting career and to become the governor of the great state of California and to live the American dream. I treasure the liberty and opportunity that I found in this country. And even more, I treasure the people, the people who protect this country. Because I'm very much aware that this didn't happen out of nowhere. The people worked for this. As each of you knows, American freedom is not free. And the reason why this is the greatest country in the world is because people fought for it. For more than 200 years, it's been paid for in blood and in sacrifice by those who have worn our nation's uniform. Let us never forget that America is the land of the free only because it is the home of the brave. And I will never forget that. And this is why any opportunity that I have to say thank you to our troops, I do so. I've been traveling to bases all over the United States and all over the state of California and all over the world. As a matter of fact, I just came from a trade mission a few months ago to South Korea. And there I made sure that we put on our schedule a few hours aside so I can visit the, our troops, our brave men and women, and entertain them, tell them some jokes, <laughs> pump them up, and say thank you for the great work that you're doing. And a few months before, I was in Iraq for the second time to visit our troops there. And they spent the whole night there working out during the night, taking pictures with them and schmoozing with them, having a good time with them, and also pumping them up and saying thank you to them. Or oh, if it is Kosovo, Germany, Japan, or anywhere in the world, I've been visiting them to say thank you to them. And one of my favorite things that I do every year is when I go to Washington to visit the Walter Reed and the Bethesda Hospital, to visit our wounded men and women there and to hang out with them and to talk to them. And it is amazing when you listen to those stories and the kind of sacrifices that they make. It is really outstanding, the bravery. I mean, when you hear from people, they have taken tour after tour after tour, and the things that they lose every time, they talk about losing their jobs when they come back, they talk about losing their homes when they come back, they talk about losing their families when they come back, losing their limbs, and sometimes even their lives. Too often our troops also bring back the enemy with them in their heads. We are seeing a lot of post-traumatic stress syndrome. The suicide rate is disturbingly high. We cannot continue to live in denial. We have to confront this. 
our men and women need help when they come back. We cannot look the other way. They need help. Here in California, we have more returning veterans than any other state. I just talked to our Joint Chiefs of Staff, Millen, about that. That this state is big. It's one of the most important, the most important state, and in it sends the most people overseas. So therefore, we have the most veterans. So along with the federal government, our state has a special obligation to serve those who serve us. And I'm proud to work with the administration and what uh, our administration alone has done over the last few years since I've come into office. We made it clear when I came into office and when I became governor that we will push and we will do everything that we can to reach out to our veterans. So we have invested more in veterans' homes than any other administration in the history of California. Thank you. I signed legislation establishing Welcome Home Vietnam Veterans Day. We fought to expand the CalVet Home Loan Program to all our veterans. We created the Honor Hero Hire Veterans Program, a job fair initiative. We approved new education benefits for our National Guard. And in January, we created Operation Welcome Home. California is now the first state to launch a campaign to connect every returning veteran to the benefits that they deserve. We have hired 300 veterans who are personally reaching out uh, to those who are returning home. And to date, we have already contacted 30,000 veterans. And when we talk about contacting 30,000 veterans, we're talking about three times in six months. We call them and we are in touch with them to see what they need. And connecting them with job training, with education, with housing assistance, and with medical care and so on. However, government alone cannot do all of those things. And this is why whenever we feel that government cannot do all those things, we form partnerships. We reach out to the private sector, to the nonprofit sector, to work with the public sector. And we are so happy that employers came forward, nonprofits came forward, community leaders and communities came forward, and volunteers. And I'm so happy that yesterday I walked through an event for Honor Hero Hire Vet, an event where we reach out to them and help them connect to all of these various different programs. And I saw hundreds and hundreds of veterans there full of joy, knowing that they're going to get this service and they're going to be connected. And I want to say thank you to the volunteers and to Karen Baker, who is sitting here, our Secretary of Volunteerism, our first Secretary in the nation, to organize hundreds of volunteers to reach out to our veterans. Let's give a big hand to those volunteers for the great work that they are doing also. Now, every year on November, uh, November 11th, we pause to commemorate Veterans Day. The day we take this special day to say thank you to our veterans. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But every day of the year, we honor your action. Every day of the year, we honor your bravery. We honor your service. And we honor your sacrifice. We honor you. Because as far as I'm concerned, we should have every day Veterans Day. Every day we should be thanking of you of the kind of great work that you've done and for how many hundreds of years you've defended this country. So thank you very much and God bless America. And now we have our chairman of the Joint Chief of Staff, Admiral Mike Mullen come out to say a few words and let me tell you something. This man is a great hero. This man has served this country for years and years and years. I admire this man. So let's give him a big, big hand for the great work that he has done. Our Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Mike Mullen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Governor, Madam First Lady. Um, uh, Mayor Villaragosa, and all of you are here to support our wonderful men and women in uniform and those who have served. It is a great treat for uh, me uh, to be here, but also be here with, uh, and, and no, I don't want you to take any umbrage, but I actually married the best woman in the world, and she's the best mother in the world and the best wife in the world. Um, it's also special for us because we're, uh, we're Angelinos. Both of us were born and raised here, and it's great to come home 
to a state who does so much for our veterans, and we're, we're very grateful for that. Uh, I'd like, first of all, just to say thanks to all who make such a difference for our men and women here. California has more veterans than any other state in the country, uh, and you set the you set the gold standard in so many ways in terms of support for our veterans. Uh, and and uh, at a time where uh, it's never been more important. It's so great to see so many out here. Uh, service Nation, this is a mission serve event, uh, mission service event, uh, and there are many of those across the nation today on this very, very special day. So uh, this happens at a time, obviously, we're in two wars. Uh, we've got tens of thousands of veterans who are returning home. Uh, this is the best military that I've ever been associated with in the over 40 years that I've been privileged to wear the uniform. Uh, they are typical, typically 18 to 24 years old, as they have been throughout our history. And they've served, and they've served without question, uh, and they've made such a difference um, in, in, the, in their service. And there have been great sacrifices. Over, over 5,500 have lost their lives, and we owe them a debt and their families a debt that, quite frankly, cannot be repaid. So what you do here uh, to recognize this uh, on a day like today is indeed very special. We also live in a time where, where things keep changing, and certainly there is great change among our veterans. Uh, we've had tens of thousands come home with physical injuries and literally hundreds of thousands that come home uh, uh, suffering from post-traumatic stress uh, and mild uh, traumatic brain injury or moderate traumatic brain injury. We call these uh, invisible wounds. Uh, and I normally don't, uh, I normally don't push uh, a specific uh, film, but tonight on HBO there's a documentary which will air called War Torn, which I commend to you, which speaks very frankly and very openly about the challenge of post-traumatic stress and, and, and also the families that go through the kind of stress uh, that uh, gets generated because of the changes that occur in those who go overseas and who make such a difference. And so I would commend it to you. We, we've got to tackle post-traumatic stress. We've got to tackle uh, traumatic brain injury uh, very, very rapidly, uh, or it will last a long time as, uh, in terms of us, being, us needing to to address it as a nation. As these veterans return home and transition, and the governor said this as well, uh, they are the best I've ever seen. They are, they, there is enormous potential uh, vested in these young men and women, uh, and it's going to take a little investment on our part, whether it's a local community, the, uh, the state, or, or national investment. As they come home, uh, seeking a better education in many cases, uh, basically taking up the new GI Bill, which is very robust. Uh, they're looking for uh, a good health care coverage, and they have some challenges with respect to that, but they're, and they're also looking for employment. So focusing on education, focusing on health, fo focusing on employment, and just giving them a bridge to, as they transition home. Uh, and local community leaders who can help here are what's really needed, and many of you are standing here today. And there are volunteers who are willing to make this happen as well, and I know that's going on in California. And the governor talked about housing. He talked about education. He talked about recognition. We need to continue to recognize them. Uh, that's really critical. But as important, if not more important than that, is to make sure that they have a future, life-sustaining future skills, which include education uh, and employment. And there's not a better place to do that than in the state of California. So uh, thanks to all of you who've made such a difference. Thanks for the volunteers. Uh, thanks to, to my home state for making Veterans Day so special. And I would only uh, reiterate what the governor says. While, while November 11th is a very special day, we need to make sure that every single day is Veterans Day. They have made such a difference for our country. We need to make sure that we give them an opportunity to continue to make that difference. Thank you for all you do, and God bless.